in this video I'm going to be stepping a little bit outside of uh, Kant per se and looking at kind of a modern interpretation of his phenomena and noumena. And so that will kind of lead to the uh, simulation hypothesis that's kind of uh, in vogue among philosophy nowadays. And so for a little bit of background information, so there is in the philosophy of science what is called scientific realism and scientific anti-realism, uh, or sometimes called instrumentalism. And this text here I copied out of a blog post of mine that I made uh, about scientific theories, kind of talking about this issue. But this will lead into what I'm going to get into uh, in this video. So in science, in science philosophy, there is scientific realism and scientific anti-realism, which is sometimes called instrumentalism. So the scientific realist says that the putative fabric of space-time or fields and quantum field theory or, you know, all those kinds of things, uh, but these are the two that I use as examples, are real entities. Uh, indeed, a popular argument by scientific realists is that it would be a miracle if our predictions were so exquisitely accurate uh, if these things didn't did not actually exist in some important way. Uh, so this is known as the no miracle argument uh, or the NMA. Uh, it, by the way, I'll link to my my blog post in the description down below. And these these are all links to different things if you want to look deeper into into a lot of these subjects. And so in quantum field theory and in, uh, in general relativity, so uh, we can think of quantum fields like this where uh, there is this, uh, in realism, they would say that there is this field here and that particles are actually real excitations in some kind of real field that sort of permeates all of space-time and in fact there are multiple fields and these fields actually exist in some way and these uh, you know they they have sort of an ontological status uh, and so this is kind of uh, a look at what a maybe 3d uh, particle would look like in a field so the you can see the fields the field lines here are all sort of warped where we have this excitation in the field. And you can think of the fabric of space-time in a similar way where we see here uh, in Einstein's general relativity, we have this space-time that, that is a real thing that's sort of actually bending and flexing and curving in response to uh, to mass and energy. Uh, and I, I put this picture here to show that this is, you know, actually kind of a three-dimensional sort of uh, fabric or field that sort of permeates all of space and time and, uh, well, is in fact itself, it is space and time. Uh, but so this is what the scientific realist says that there is actually some entity there that some something actually exists the that what the thing our theory uh, sort of posits is actually there uh, and so meanwhile scientific anti-realism says that these proposed objects are just useful or instrumental ways of talking about these things uh, and so this is oftentimes thought of in quantum mechanics in particular the shut up and calculate view of quantum mechanics, uh, essentially meaning that we shouldn't waste our time discussing what the sort of ontological nature of something like the wave function actually is. What matters is that it can, is that it can give accurate predictions. We can actually calculate things and those things will actually uh, be observed in experiments. Uh, and so this is popularly framed in what is known as the pessimistic induction, uh, which is essentially that uh, every sort of ontological entity, uh, so, you know, like the, the, the sort of quote-unquote fabric of space-time or quantum fields uh, that has been postulated in the past has been shown to be wrong, and we have no reason to think that our current 
uh, entities, so the space-time fabric and quantum fields won't go the way of, you know, the luminif luminiferous ether in the in phlogistan. So where the luminiferous ether is uh, sort of what people thought before Einstein's general relativity, that there was this sort of, you know, ultimate space uh, from which everything sort of moved relative to, uh, rather than sort of moving relative to each other. And phlogistan was uh, sort of a theory for, uh, I guess, the substance of fire, essentially. And so anyway, the scientific anti-realist is essentially saying that these things like this, this, uh, this quantum field here or this uh, this flexible space-time are not actually real things. They're uh, sort of at best sort of useful fictions that we can use to actually think about uh, this stuff. And so there is now what is popular uh, in science, in the philosophy of science, what is called scientific structuralism, which attempts to bridge the gap between realism, anti-realism, uh, although structuralism itself has been sort of split into two schools, uh, one called ontic structural realism, uh, so that the structure exists and is the ground of reality. Uh, and so that is sort of the it from bit that I'm going to be talking about here in a few minutes. Uh, and then the epistemic structural realism, uh, so the structure exists but is realized by some deeper entity is not accounted for in the theories. And so that is sometimes called the it from bit from it hypothesis. And so what is meant by structure is, uh, you know, we can think of you know, uh, sort of the different properties that something can have, like, like mass and charge and, and stuff like that. So these are all sort of properties that things can have. You could, you know, list all the other properties. And so we say that these properties essentially, uh, you know, we say that there is, I guess, kind of a thing. Uh, well, that's the thing is there's not really a thing that there is, you know, so, so X, you know, has, has some mass and, you know, has some charge. And this X here is kind of, you know, just sort of a placeholder for the all these things which sort of interact with each other in various ways. And so that would be kind of the structure uh, of things. And so this is an idea popular in in uh, the philosophy of science now that that all there is is, is structure. And so you can think about it broadly as being that we have sort of our, our mathematics, so our mathematics and you know this is you know like our, our equations and things like that equations and you know physical laws so physical laws and we also have sort of our observations i'll just put it like that observations or measurements or measurements and so these are the you know the the sort of outputs outputs of experiments so I'll just put uh, experiments and then that is all there really is uh, as far as what actually exists uh, and so uh, this is the so there isn't you know some sort of uh, there, well there isn't necessarily some sort of underlying substance uh, and so that's actually where this this other split here comes from, uh, where the ontic structural realism says that, that the structure exists and is the ground of reality. And so uh, this is kind of this idea that's become popular, especially with you know people like Max Tegmark, who says that you know basically reality is made out of math, essentially that there is sort of uh, there is sort of math, and th that is kind of what everything in reality is built up from. Uh, and so this is actually what kind of the uh, the uh, simulation hypothesis gets to, uh, is whether it's this it from bit or whether it's this it from bit from it here, which is the epistemic structural realism, which says the structure exists, but it's realized by some sort of deeper entities which are not accounted for in our theories. And so you could think of the 
simulation hypothesis as being, uh, well, are we simulated from sort of a computer that's, you know, that's just computing kind of on nothing? You know, you think of a computer, when a computer computes, it has to have, you know, the transistors and things like that which are sort of the, the physical uh, substrate on which computation is happening. And so that would be kind of the way that the it from bit from it uh, comes about. So the the it at the bottom would be like the transistors, and then the bits would be sort of the computations running on those transistors, where as Ontic structural realism says there isn't this underlying it, uh, there is just the... Uh, sort of the the bit that's at the kind of bottom of of reality and so these are two ways of thinking about uh, about this structuralism here and so well this is from uh, from John Archibald Wheeler's it's the abstract from his paper talk where he uh, first proposed this idea of it from bit so you can see that down here uh, so otherwise stated every physical quantity every it derives its fundamental significance from bits binary yes or no indications the conclusion which we epitomize in the phrase it from bit uh, and so i've actually made this uh, figure here and so we can think of uh, here in the center circle in green uh, here, this is sort of the it uh, of our our world. So you know, you're you're touching your phone or your computer or you know the chair you're sitting in now. Those are sort of the its, and we can think of sort of each of these nodes in here as being kind of like you know, sort of uh, physical you know physical properties, things like mass or charge or things like that. And then the the edges here, these connecting lines are sort of how all of these things sort of interact with each other. And so we have this sort of uh, inner circle here that is the it. Uh, then in the blue in this sort of central circle here is the bit. Uh, and so this is, you know, sort of the, the computational or data structure of, you know, maybe the computer that w that is simulating our reality. Uh, or, you know, if this is the real reality, but but it or bits uh, rather are sort of the the ground of reality, sort of the the bottom substrate of which everything that realizes or makes real everything else. Uh, and then so I also have in red here the sort of outer it. So if we have the it from bit from it, then it would posit this sort of outer it. Uh, which is actually sort of running the computations. It's sort of the physical substrate, uh, sort of the transistors on which these computations are being run. And so the it from bit would uh, not have this red sort of outside part. It would say that uh, that all we need is the bits here or in these uh you know, the Max Tegmark idea that everything is just math, that, that you know, sort of abstract math is sort of the, the bottom or the substrate or the ground of, of everything in existence. And so this gets us to where we can tie this in with, uh, with Immanuel Kant and his idea of the phenomena and noumena. And so we could maybe think of this it as the, the phi the phenomena uh, and you know whether you take the it from bit or the it from bit from it you could think of this as sort of the 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 noumena uh, and probably more likely this it here which you know our sort of physical theories wouldn't uh, wouldn't actually know anything about because that this is sort of an it that's underlying everything that sort of sits you know, outside what we can actually detect or observe or measure or whatever. And so you can see that this idea of the simulation hypothesis uh, can be tied in uh, somewhat with Kant's uh, ideas of the phenomena and the noumena. And so, uh, so I'm making this video because I've actually uh, been reading David J. Chalmers' book, Reality Plus uh, Virtual Worlds in the Problems of Philosophy. And he actually kind of makes this connection uh, 
near the end of his book uh, between the simulation hypothesis and uh, and Kant's idea of phenomena or sort of the the realm of objects as we experience them and then noumena which is sort of the realm of objects in themselves uh, and so Chalmers actually talks a bit in the book too about how this uh, about this sort of uh, idea of it at the very bottom perhaps being some sort of uh, dust sitting you know outside of space and time so it's just sitting here uh, but you know this this dust here is in some state on while this one here is in some state off uh, and so you know each of these can be in a different state on or off and we can think of this going off to infinity in every direction and so if, if there, it goes off to infinity then essentially everything that could possibly be uh, must exist because the sort of combinations of ons and offs uh, in this dust whatever you know on means or off means so there's just you know some difference between them uh, you'll run into places in this sort of infinite space of you know sort of timeless dust where you will end up sort of accidentally sort of computing uh, all of existence you know because if we if we are saying that all of existence can be computed if we're saying that bits are sort of the the underlying uh, sort of noumena I guess of reality then in some infinite sort of cloud of timeless dust you will get to a point where sort of the right combination of ons and offs occur such that uh, that you are actually computing all of reality uh, and so uh, so Chalmers uh, kind of rejects this idea for various reasons he thinks that uh, there needs to be some kind of causality in order to actually uh, run the the simulation uh, essentially causality being uh, counterfactual saying you know uh, so if X uh, then Y but also sort of if you know not X then not Y so there's sort of this uh, this sort of necessity that you know that X is causing Y uh, but I won't get too much into that here uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, there is this way that we can sort of tie uh, the Kantian uh, philosophy of the phenomena and the noumena into sort of you know more modern ideas of philosophy this it from bit and the simulation hypothesis and things like that but anyway I thought uh, maybe people might be interested in this and like I said uh, I'll link to some blog posts I've made uh, about this idea in in the description down below and I'll also link to David Chalmers book on Amazon so that's reality plus uh, virtual worlds and the problems of philosophy uh, but anyway I hope you found this video interesting and I will see you in the next one